Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com for this combo promo. You can get this Renee scarf, ooh, and these Miss Hollywood DC shades for $50, or you can get the Renee scarf for $25 and the shades for $30. It's up to you, baby. But I would take advantage of the combo promo because, ooh. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue. I like this look. I really do. I really do. It is giving 70s rich white woman. I really like this, y'all. You know I'm a scarf and nice pair of shades girl. I love this. Anyway, let's continue talking about taking back my name by Ickety. Ickety. Turner. Tina and I were like one P in a hub, man. Even though Raymond was her boyfriend, people used to say we were brother and sister. I would pretend to be a gay man and say, no, we're sisters. Tina always knew what kind of guy I was with women. I would tell her, hey, see that girl over there? Go get her for me and tell her to meet me over at the house. Tina knew everything I liked and disliked in a woman. If I took a chick to the house, I would tell Tina, man, I can't stand that chick. In the morning, she get up. She don't even brush her teeth, man. Or I'd say, this chick, man, when she get up in the morning, she don't even make up the bed. She don't even offer to cook you no food. I tell Tina, I don't like this girl because she can't screw. Or that girl is too possessive and jealous. Tina knew everything about every woman that I was going with because she was my buddy. She met all my girlfriends and was friends with them. So let me say this, that part I wholeheartedly believe. The other day I was thinking back uh, to when I was younger, it was this guy named Paris. He was from Uptown, too. And I mean, me and this guy was like two peas in a pod. You hear me? The only reason why we stopped being so close is because I found like this new best friend. That's my Judy, Candace. Candace, wherever you are, please know I love you so much. Another cancer. If he liked a girl, I would say, hey, Paris likes you. You know, I, I forgot how close I was to him. We went to high school together. Me and that guy was so close. I don't know where he is now. I have seen him here and there over the years, but I believe it. Then I had this other guy that uh, I liked, but he was a Libra. And me and Libra men are, are not, like, compatible. You know, I don't really 
vibe with them because I don't want to be with somebody just as goofy as me. Me and this guy was super duper close and we would show our affection to each other. You know, outwardly, it may look like we were in a relationship, but in reality, we were like brother and sister. The problem happened because something in my mind clicked on that I had to be like, you know what, I want to be in a relationship right now. He's the guy that I think I should try. And in reality, we probably should have just stayed brother and sister because it ended not well. You know, and I lost a good friend. You know, I always thought he was an attractive guy, but it was just, it was forced, okay? And when it's forced, things go wrong, okay? Hence, I continue. Anyway, they out one time. Okay, and I saw Tina dancing with this white guy named Teddy Cole. Teddy was a good dancer and Tina could really jitterbug too. All the other people had stopped dancing and formed a loose circle and I was looking down at Tina in this blue dress. She looked real sexy to me. Each time she got down on the floor and moved, she looked just like a snake wiggling around. It was the first time that Tina began to appeal to me in a sexual way. I don't drink, man, but that night after work, I decided to take a whiskey while I waited for the owner of the club to pay me. I began to feel bad. I drank maybe two shot glasses of old Charlotte and boy, I got sick as a dog. I just wanted to lay down and wallow. So Tina and my driver, Stennis, put me in the back seat of the car. Tina rode in back with me, trying to comfort me while I was vomiting and stuff. So we got to my house in East St. Louis and they carried me upstairs. She's pulling off my clothes and getting me into bed. Then she goes to change and make me some coffee. She, she came back in the room wearing one of those sexy nightgowns I had ordered from Fredericks of Hollywood. Ooh, remember Fredericks of Hollywood? Let me Child, that was like a magazine or a pamphlet or something that would come to your house, girl. Child, I used to be like, why the hell? Why would the man want to eat the underwears off the lady? Because they had edibles underwears. That was the first time I ever seen an edible underwears or underwears that wanted to be edibles, okay? Then it was a such thing as crotchless un underwears. I'm like, why do they have that for? So she could sit down and pee. I was young and dumb. But then I started realizing, oh, that's what the sexy ladies wear. Ooh, la, la. Fredericks of Hollywood was before the Victoria's Secret. You hear me? That gown barely went down to her hips and you could see right through it. She's up there trying to make me drink black coffee, I guess to bring me down from this drunk trunk I was on. And man, I remember looking down at her legs. When she reached over to set the coffee cup down on the nightstand, my dick got so hard. Then Tina and I began to wrestle around playfully on the bed. And the next thing I know, man, I done had sex with her. I mean, it happened. He drunk, Tina ain't. I'm, I'm on this ice coffee today. Anything is possible. Lou, who you walking at? Baby. Baby. Come here, Lou. When I woke up the next morning, Tina was still in bed with me. I felt embarrassed and ashamed. It was like I just screwed my sister. All I knew was I didn't want to do it no more. So I left her alone for about five or six weeks. Then she came and told me that she was pregnant. This was a real headache and not just because they had recorded a hit record and needed to get out and promote it. To make matters worse, another girl, Pat, was also pregnant by Ike. Pat was a singer and she and Tina used to compete. So when she told Ike that she was pregnant too, he didn't believe her. That difficulty resolved itself when Pat suddenly disappeared. The real problem came when Ike's living girlfriend, Lorraine Taylor, returned. Before all this happened, I was living with Lorraine, the mother of our son, Ike Jr. Her parents owned the Taylor Sausage Factory in St. Louis. She had run off and moved back in with them for a while, taking our son with her. Ike, why are all the women in your world always running off? Lulu, what you want? About a month 
After Tina and I had sex, Lorraine decided to come back. She didn't know anything had happened between Tina and me, but she soon found out that Tina was pregnant. She asked me about it, but I always managed to avoid answering her questions. One morning, I was real tired after playing a club and staying up all night gambling. I went home and got into bed with Lorraine to get some sleep. Lorraine tried to ask more questions about me and Tina, but again, I didn't answer. While I was sleeping, Lorraine got out of bed and went to Tina's room. She had my 38 caliber pistol and a poker from the fireplace. She went in and said to Tina, bitch, are you fucking sunny? I'm going to kill you, whore. Tina told her that if that's what she felt like doing, she should go ahead and do it. I believe Tina said that. Because like I've said before, Tina ain't no victim. She ain't weak. Nothing about Tina Turner says weak. Everything about Tina Turner says I will kick your ass. And if I ain't kicking your ass right now, it's because I don't want to do it right now. But when I get ready to do it, watch out. Tina got out of bed, rushing past Lorraine, came to wake me up. She shook me. She was screaming, Ike, wake up, wake up. Lorraine's got a gun. I was struggling to clear my head while Tina told me what had happened. I got out of bed to go find Lorraine. As I went up the hallway, I heard the bathroom door slam shut and the lock go click. I went to the door and yelled, Lorraine, give me that fucking gun. There was no answer. I was just about to go around to the balcony from where you could reach the window to the bathroom when I heard the door lock click again followed by a loud pow. Lorraine had unlocked the door, then put the gun to her side and pulled the trigger. She had shot herself. The bullet went through both of her lungs and punctured her heart. The first thing I did was to pick up the gun, leaving my fingerprints on it. I took it to the bedroom and set it on the table, then reached for the telephone to call the hospital. My hands were shaking so bad that I couldn't even dial the number. Finally, I got the operator and told her that a girl had just shot herself and gave her the address of my house. A few minutes later, the police arrived with an ambulance. They took her to St. Mary's Hospital in East St. Louis, a place where Black still had to go through the back door. Meantime, the police were asking me if I was the one who had shot Lorraine. When I told them no, they said that I was a damned liar. Things were looking pretty bleak for Ike. He and his band already had a reputation for violence and involvement with guns. And by now, Lorraine was lying deliriously in the hospital, moaning, Sonny, don't shoot. Sonny, don't shoot. Worse, his fingerprints were all over the gun. It looked as if they would put him in jail and throw away the key. If he was not sent to the electric chair, that is, then he got a break. Lorraine survived miraculously. Ickety Ikety had told the policeman, look, this girl done shot herself. I didn't shoot the damn gun. And I'm okay. sure police being police, you know, well, I didn't had I didn't play some games with some women's heads too, you know. So I get it, cause you know them police before they police they men. Trust me, if the police is 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 down, you know, ninja first, man first, and the guy be like, look, this is my side bitch, I am married. Please don't arrest me today. Everything is gonna be all and over. The policeman know because he got two side bitches. He finna let the dude go because they are men first before they are policemen. I helped nurse Lorraine back to health after she came home from the hospital. She already had two other kids who were living with her mother. She always said that she didn't like kids, but once our records began to hit, she stayed at home while Tina and I went out on the road. Once a week or so, she would come out to wherever we were and spend a few days with us. Out on the road, though, I started to have sex with Tina again. As far as that side of our relationship is concerned, I've always felt that Tina was attractive, but not really sensuous. She felt more like my sister, not my wife. To be honest, I felt that having sex with her was almost a duty. Well, why'd you do it? As we went through the motions of sex, I felt that her actions and responses 
were mechanical. But that didn't stop you from hunting her. You still hunched her. In August 1960, A Fool in Love climbed to number two in the R&B charts. And the tour launched on the back of it took Ike and Tina all across America. The Apollo Theater in New York City is a slave house, man. Everybody say that. We did four shows a day, seven days a week, six on Sundays, and we were thinking that Tina was only eight months pregnant. In fact, she was nine months gone. She really wowed the crowd, jumping off the stage, down into the pit, and dancing. The owner of the theater he was scared she might fall, so he told her not to jump down there no more. It was about five feet from the stage to the floor. It remind me athletically of that Krishan Rock, because that Krishan Rock is a machine. After Tina and I got together and my career started going up, I started going with every girl I saw with a little waist and a big ass. I wanted to try them all, man. When we were playing the Apollo Theater, I was messing around with three girls, Wilhelmina, Eloise, and another girl named Martha. Which one of the girls had the clapper? That's what I want to know. You messing with all these hoes. I know, I, I know you ain't using the condoms. Which one had the clapper? I we planned to return to Los Angeles for Tina to have the baby after the Apollo. Our next date was in Las Vegas. Not on the strip, but over at the damn black ass club, which I think Sammy Davis Jr. owned a part of. Tina and I flew there. The band drove. We played only one date and then continued to L.A. We still thought Tina was in her eighth month. I had found a girl in Detroit whom I had trained to take Tina's place when the time came for her to give birth. This girl looked like Tina, same height, same complexion, and we had trained her well enough for the public not to be able to tell the difference. What I didn't know was that she had been working as a hooker. When I read I, Tina, I didn't believe the shenanigans. I'm like, come on, Tina. Come on, girl. You know you was good time, Tina. You know you was participating in some of them organies. And you and Ike ain't together, together. But I didn't believe Tina in her book. Now that Ickety Ikety is confirming it, I believe. What I didn't know was that she had been working as a hooker. This girl had been traveling and practicing with us for five or six months and had been secretly turning tricks on the side. After closing in Las Vegas, I flew Tina to Los Angeles while I rode in the car with the driver and a few of the iCats, including the girl I was training as Tina, standing. Man, we partied and orgied all the way to Los Angeles with those girls. Man, what the hell, Miss Roby? What the hell is going on here? Now, in the book, I Turner has a lot of respect for Miss Robbie, Sweetie Pie Robbie's, Miss Robbie. Okay. Now, Miss Robbie, I know goddamn well you wasn't in on them orgies. Please, the Jesus tell me you wasn't in on them orgies. She went into labor when I was on my way to the airport, and our son Ronnie was born that Thursday night. That Friday, one of the Ikeets went out to the hospital and told Tina that this girl was turning tricks in the hotel under Tina's name. The guys thought they were effing Tina. Boy, when she heard about that, Tina signed herself out of the hospital and went back there and beat that girl ass. Gave her a good old ass kicking and fired her. Tina went on stage herself that Saturday, so my son was born on the Thursday. Tina beat up that girl on Friday and she was back on stage. By Saturday, I wasn't charging but 300 to 600 per gig. I kept my fees at that level for a long time until I cut Bold Soul Sister with Bob Kraft now. He told me, man, you ain't never going to make no money hanging around here in town. You could make as much as you make in a week in one night if you just got on the road and traveled. So we started the tour for 11 months a year. I'd get home on the 31st of December and take January off. Robbie Montgomery, a former Iket, says, we had a bus in those days. Sometimes it would break down and we would have to stay somewhere until it was fixed. We would rehearse on the bus, get to the hotel, rehearse, try to find something to eat, go to the gig, back to the hotel, back on the bus. It was a constant thing. By then, because of our first record, I was able to maintain a seven-piece band. 
Gradually, I was becoming a perfectionist, and so I got more firm. I got a reputation as a tough boss. I'm very dominating about what I want on stage. You always get arguments from musicians about what you're playing, but I want it played the way I want it played. And one thing I will say about Ike is that he's just not aggressive to women, even though it's wrong. But you know how you got them men that only jump in women's faces? They be like, sit your bitch ass down before I go get my brother. They be, you know, rah, in the woman's face. But as soon as a ninja come around, they be like, okay, you got it. They only beat up on women or aggressive on women, you know, because they don't want that smoke with ninjas. What I give Ickety is that he was like that to everybody. It's like this, man. I would go out and orgy with you. I'd do anything with you, man. We would party. We would go gamble together. We'd fight together. But when it comes down to what we do on stage, man, this is something we're going to give our all to. If you're sitting up there thinking about how you look, not about what you're playing, well, it don't happen with me, man. The result was a high turnover of musicians in the band. Oh, like like the oldest. Okay, like the oldest. It, well, well y'all told me that Otis and Ickety Ickety got something in common. If people did not tow the line, they were out. Ike's I, autocratic attitude meant that some of the band boys were frightened of him, but that, as he points out, was their problem. Exactly. I know you want to keep your job, but who the fuck are you talking to? Excuse me, sir, madam, sir. Who the hell are you talking to? Shoot. We had a job. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Correct me, okay? And if your mouth is smart and I feel a little bar embarrassed, it's okay, because I'm going to get back at you later on when you least expect it, okay? Do something like, you know, sleep with one of his girls, something like that. And be playing the drums like this. My contract covered the Ike and Tina Turner review. That didn't mean Ike Turner or Tina Turner had to be there. It meant that you got the review. It didn't say Ike and Tina Turner, so Ike and Tina was extra. If I didn't go on, no promoter could make no deductions as long as the Ike and Tina review performed. Similarly, if you booked Ike and Tina, the review, Musicians, was extra. Fucking genius. I decided to be my own booking agent. I didn't have a secretary then, but I did have a housekeeper. On tour, I'd call the housekeeper when I arrived in the new city. I'd give her the name and the phone number of the hotel I was staying in so that whenever a call came in to book a performance date for Ike and Tina or to order records, she could forward it to me. Okay. Okay. That's like a secretary housekeeper. That way, I was always available to anyone who needed to reach me. This is how I was able to generate business and earn a living for Ike and Tina, the Ikeettes, and the various band members. There were 16 or more people in those days. As arrogant as Ike Turner is, I was highly shocked when he said that he was not the king of rock and roll. Guess who he said the king of rock and roll was? Bitch, I'm floored.